By 2014, we're predicting that it will be 0.3 degrees warmer than 2004. Now, just to put that into context, the warming over the past century and a half has only been 0.7 degrees globally. Now, there have been bigger changes locally, but globally, the, the warming is 0.7 degrees. So 0.3 degrees over the next 10 years is, quite, is pretty significant. And half of the years after 2009 are predicted to be hotter than 1998, which was the previous record. So again, these are very strong statements about what will happen over the next 10 years. So again, I think this illustrates that you know, we can already see signs of climate change, but over the next 10 years, we are expecting to see quite significant changes um, occurring. So um, what about the risks of dangerous climate change further into the future? So this is that, that's my sort of attempt to draw a thermometer on the left-hand side there. And I've just picked up some iconic um, changes that we might expect at various different temperatures. There are lots of other changes that you could pick here, but this is just really to illustrate the point. So I, I mentioned that the, temperatures in, the global average temperatures increased by 0.7 degrees, and that's illustrated by the, the, the blue meniscus there just at 0.7. When we get to 1 degree, we're already... Um, seeing some marine ecosystems suffer irreversible change. And there's already been reports of um, coral reefs being damaged by ocean acidification. So that's a very real danger that's, that's happening now. The melting of the Greenland ice sheets. Um, the Arctic um, is a region where we will expect to see climate change first, and, and there are already signs of, of change in terms of ice melting. Although, because the observations don't go back very far, it's quite difficult to disentangle natural variations from climate change. But we would expect to see the changes first, uh, quite, quite large changes in the Arctic, um, because you get strong feedbacks um, in the Arctic in terms of temperature. The temperature changes are much bigger there. Um, as ice melts, a lot of ice reflects sunlight. So as it melts and disappears, you've got a darker surface. It absorbs more sunlight and so you get more warming. So you get a stronger warming in the Arctic than you do in, in other regions. So um, we would expect by the time we get to two degrees that the melting of the, uh, the Greenland ice sheets may become irreversible. So basically the melting is happening faster than uh, snowfall builds it up again. So it will, it will gradually um, decrease. If all the Greenland ice melts, that would give rise to a, a rise in sea level of seven metres, which is very significant. But we have to bear in mind that this takes a very long time. It, um, it takes, takes a lot of heat to, to actually melt all that ice, and it could take 3,000 years before it melts. But obviously, if you set yourself on a train where that's irreversible, you know, that, that has very dire consequences in the future. It, it allows you lots of time to adapt, but, it, but it, makes, it would make the world a very different place. Once you get to three degrees, we're looking at the risk of significant loss of the Amazon rainforest. Um, and in fact, in our model, the, the Amazon rainforest disappears completely. Um, in other models, it's not quite so dramatic. But nevertheless, this is a very significant area. And it provides a, a, um, a feedback, actually, on the climate, because the, the rainforest obviously cycles a lot of water. Um, if the rainforest disappears, then you get drying out and you get a feedback on, on uh, a reduction in climate. You also, if um, vegetation disappears, if soils are damaged, then not as much of the carbon dioxide that we produce is...